1915, the second year of the First World War. It takes just seven weeks to build the HMS M33 to meet the urgent need for monitors, big gun shore bombardment ships. They'll become especially valuable in the desperate struggle of the Gallipoli campaign, taking the fight to the courageous and tenacious Turkish army dug in deep against the Allied invasion. A century later, it takes a touch more than seven weeks to bring this veteran warship back to life. Now though, she's not just the sole survivor of the ships that fought at Gallipoli, she's a living embodiment of that ill-starred venture, telling her story to a new generation. It's a fantastic bit of restoration, isn't it? We're telling a very significant story. We want this fabulous historic ship to last, you know, for another hundred years. You will get on board and I think you will feel straight away that you're back in 1915. The atmosphere, the lighting, the sound that we've got on board um, is fantastic. Things like the forward mess deck when you go on it, which we've seen as a small space over the months, but now it's fitted out. Um, the mess tables are laid out, and that the hammocks are in, and that the hammocks have got the name of the original crew marked on them. Um, it's just that sense of a confined space, of a space that the crew lived in for three and a half years. There were six cabins on board, so the captain got two. He had a day cabin as well as a sleeping cabin. Four of them are sort of crammed together aft with a little wardroom. We say wardroom, it sounds grand, but it's really a pretty small uh, box, effectively. Um, those are fully restored spaces. Um, I think people um, will be amazed at how personal we've made them. So I think it's going to feel as if the crew are, have just kind of popped out of the door, effectively. We've got the galley set up. Um, they've just got a kind of order of bacon on and they're, they're brewing up the tea as well. So again, it's a sense of, you know, maybe it's eight o'clock in the morning and the cook has just stepped out. Um, that galley, it is actually next to the wash places and the heads for the crew. Um, and so we've got um, people can peer in and look at what a kind of pumped WC would have looked like in 1915. It's a really fun for people, I think. We always know, not only children, everybody likes to go and just look at those basics of life. Oh God, to the ready! Stand by! Stand by. Oh, yeah. Fire! In the very heart of the ship is the very heart of her story, where HMS M33 won her battle honours. The bravery and horror of Gallipoli, the bid to defeat Germany's ally, Turkey, by forcing the narrow straits of the Dardanelles to seize her capital, Constantinople modern-day Istanbul. A bold stroke that ended in disaster. However great and stirring an event from the past may be, history is about people. For those designing the M33 experience, that fact is central and crucial. The First World War is full of big stories, big numbers, big casualties. M33 was part of that, but in a very personal way. And thanks to, thanks to the crew, who this, this cutout here represents, it's taken from a photograph of the actual crew at Gallipoli. The crew's diaries, the crew's journals actually speak to us over a hundred years. This is a historic piece of steel, it's a historic ship, that she's a rare ship, she's a rare survivor. But also I, th I think it's, it's, the, it's the personal stories. It's the fact that 72 men, sailors, lived, worked, went to war on this ship, came back, and we have their stories to tell. Visiting HMS M33, you not only see, you hear what she must have been like. Sounds of the ship and her crew echo where lives were lived on board. Midships, midships. Helms of midships, sir. You can almost imagine meeting a First World War sailor just around the corner. For TV comedy star Hugh Dennis, 
the human connection of M33 could hardly be stronger or more direct. I had a great uncle called Frank Hinnells, who was in the Suffolks and who uh, was at Gallipoli, I think, at the beginning of August 1915, which is when this ship also arrived in Gallipoli, providing, you know, kind of cover and, uh, with bombardment. I just think he was very, very grateful for this, for this uh, ship, yeah. But sadly, you know, this ship has survived and he didn't, so he died on October the 15th. The whole campaign must just have been desperate. The terrain was desperate, the, the odds were desperate, the planning was fairly desperate. Oh, it's a to the sandy shore. There was tremendously strong barbed wire. Man after man behind me was shot down. Now, all the audiovisual stuff on this has been is, is brilliant, actually. Uh, and it's kind of, you know, eight months in ten minutes <laughs> down there. I just love the atmosphere down here, the smell. I love the, 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 the audio effects, uh, is, uh, are absolutely fantastic. Uh, with the vibrations of the bangs and the shells and whatever going off, literally you could feel it rather than hear it. My Great uncle, Private David Maxwell Gordon of the Second Field Company, Royal Naval Divisional Engineers, served at Gallipoli from the 29th of April 1915 through to the evacuation. The honour given to that memory, to all the memories, comes to life in HMS M33, with the historic ship open to all. And so her story lives on and the story of all those who served in the Royal Navy of the First World War, across far oceans, often in ships very like her. M33, Great War Survivor, reborn for the 21st century.